Hello guys and welcome to another episode of my flight sim videos. Today we are going to fly from King Shaka in Durban to Johannesburg again. Just like the last time but with two subtle differences. Number one we are using PFPX as the flight planner and number two we are doing this in uh, prepared. So no explain today guys. The PFPX uh, layout in our OFP is slightly different but I've again highlighted all the necessary things that we are going to need. I'm not going to read through it with you. I am however going to keep it handy and open on the left hand screen here so I can use it to set up the aircraft and prepare for the flight while in the cockpit. Okay, now this might sound silly, but uh, being P3D and the PMDG 737, the Zebo checklist doesn't really work for us. So we are going to change whatever we need to change in the workflow to get the same results. At the end of the day, we want to fly from a airport 1 to airport 2 and uh, we need to do what we need to do. So we are going to start uh, very similarly by making sure the parking brake is set. Gear should be down, we should check the speed brake to be up, in other words not extended and we need to make sure that the flaps are all retracted and then we can also switch on the battery. In this case the way we are presented most of the equipment with the guards are already down that we have to check in the other aircraft but um, we can then go down to find the PMDG way of doing things and go find our ground connections. We want our ground power to be on and we are not going to worry so much about the rest right now. Our next step will be to set the interior and exterior lights to suit us. And the next step will be to align the IRSs. While we are waiting for the IRSs, we can start working on the FMC. We always start with fuel first. Six thousand one hundred and one kilograms and payload second. This is a full flight, so we are going to load it full up. So the doors are now all open and we can set the position of the aircraft.
and that gives us the position and the IRS is are now aligned as well we are going to use runway 06 Flight will be Tolka 8104 Mango Airlines. And activate and execute our departure. Box 06 is Great Town 1 Alpha. And our arrival is on runway 21 left. And that will be in the standard 1 Delta arrival. As far as I know, we will not be discontinuity support from that in the real world and when we fly online. We do get vectors from this point, so we're going to leave it as is. Reserves 1, cost index 6, and we're going to fly flight level 320. And the winds, if we feed it up again, the winds 255 at 25. Our transition altitude will be 5500 in our departure, and our SEL, our assumed temperature will be 37 today, and that will be on D rate take of 2. And we need to climb as fast as we can because this is a very short flight, we don't want to waste time. We're going to use flaps 5. Very much 144 and the runway heading as far as I know 062 and there's no ATC or any other restrictions so we might as well climb to flight level 320 fantastic done Our next step will be to switch on the APU. Oh goodness, there we go. Generators uh, for the APU are now on. Your damper goes on, all these switches are correct, the crossfeed is closed. We're keeping the fuel pumps off right now. And you can see all the power. Uh, indicators are where they're supposed to be we are no zeros no the ground power is on we can switch it off just make sure and then the lights we did emergency lights we can put the guard down 
my smoking and the seat belts go to on and auto the wiper blades are parked we can test the window heat and then we can actually switch the window heat on probes stay off they have to stay off until after the engine is running and then anti-ice we don't need so that's fine our engine um, hydraulic pumps are on uh, for number one and number two uh, the electrical hydraulic pumps remain off for now and then we can check, check the air conditioner packs to auto isolation valve on and we have all of these three in the right position little bit sensitive eh? all right then we're going to land at um, flight well at an altitude of 5500 feet and our switch is on auto we need to make sure that the engine start switch is on both and then we can continue further At this point in time I am going to call the ground services Ah, now our little friend can go and put the pin in. Thank you, brake released. But we did. Ooh, it went back on. Must have double tapped. Sorry. That looks about right. Okay, let us start engine 2. And we have to wait for 25% on N2 and then we will inject the uh, fuel there. Brake set, start engine one. So 
same story for engine one, we wait for 25% on in two and then we inject the fuel. Thank you young man, alright engine generators coming on, APU going off, APU bleed off packs on, isolation valve auto. And before we get fuel starvation, we should have switched this on before start but anyway there we go, now it's on. Probes are on and the electrical hydraulic switches are on. Taxi light goes on. And we go to flaps 5. <coughs> I beg your pardon, flaps 5 for takeoff. And we'll wait for the green light. The brake to RTO. We have a green light there and green light there on the flaps. Then we are going to pretend that this airport has ASDEX enabled, and after setting the squawk, we will immediately set TA and RA on. And um, then they can track us on the ground radar as well. So everything looks fine. We can release the brakes and start the taxi. Our runway entry procedure starts with the taxi lights going off and landing lights going on. Position lights goes to strobe and steady, so that's two clicks, and our engines go to continuous. Our uh, transponder is set on TIR already and now we can set the weather radar and we can set the terrain if necessary, not for us today. Just switching between the turbulence there. And now we can taxi onto the runway and take off. power set. V1. V1. V2. Right eight. Gear up. So with Command A selected, the aircraft is now on autopilot and we can relax for a few seconds. The 
landing and gear can go to off the auto brake can go to off you can start retracting the flaps flaps one Flaps up. And now the neighbor's dog needs to bark right now, eh? We will do the after takeoff checklist just now. We've gone through the transition altitude, so standard set. Let us do the after takeoff checklist. Landing gear up and off, flaps retracted. Autopilot engaged, the auto brake is off, and we have set standard um, on the altimeter because we are above the transition altitude. Now we're waiting on 10,000 to do the lights and engine switches. Ten thousand. Let us uh, switch the landing lights off. Our starter switches goes to auto. The position light. So difficult to see here. And you need to right need to use the right button anyway. There we go. Position. The position lights goes to steady. Right guys, I think um, I'm going to stop the video for now and continue when we get close to the top of descent. We will um, then continue our flight from there and uh, speak to you from there on. Okay, so we are 82 nautical miles from the top of our descent and we can start looking at setting up for the approach and arrival. Let us uh, tune our radio. Because we are using Active Sky, we should be able to pick up on the ATIS.
That's good enough for us. The runway will therefore remain the same. We do not need to change um, any of our detail in the FMC on the approach side. We need to set up the landing flaps at a different speed and we need to set up the forecast transition altitude which will be 080 for 8000 feet. While we are here we might as well check the radios. Oliver Tambo runway 21 left will be 109 decimal 9. And we're looking at an approach course of 214. And the auto brake, we can set the auto brake too. We are now nearing our top of descent and we need to reset our MCP altitude. You can get the appropriate altitude from the charts or you can find your um, FAP in your uh, leg section as well. Um, here we go. Your final approach point is the altitude that you need to set to, so 8000 is correct. We might as well follow the heading now, um, because we're going to have to switch to the heading mode shortly anyway. Well, we're coming up to uh, our uh, destination here yeah? and I'm sitting here looking at these clouds. Man, I'm amazed. They look so cool. And there's the airport coming into view now. Let's go for flaps one so long.
Right, so at the end of this line, at the um, final approach point, we will switch to our heading selector and heading mode, and we will then pretend to fly vectors to finals. That looks very interesting. Right, here we go. Now we go on to the heading selector and we can start out there. Now that's a rough estimate. We can fix it shortly. Let's go to flaps 5. Flaps 10. And then when we, once we are established on the localizer, we can go gear down flaps 15. From there on we will use manual intervention and slow the aircraft down to land. Let's check those landing V speeds. Uh, v 36. our airport already and that is our runway to land to one left
thanks for watching guys and i hope that you will enjoy your flight swimming until we speak again next time